Hello. Bruce Lee's style of Jeet Kune Do is known as the way of the intercepting fist, and if we reference a line from his Tao of Jeet Kune Do, quote, the counterattack calls for the greatest skill, the most perfect planning, and the most delicate execution of all fighting techniques. It is the greatest art in fighting, the art of the champion. Understanding this makes better sense of what he's doing. Throughout the sparring, he essentially feels his opponent's rhythm, and when he feels or sees breaks in his opponent's rhythm, with his lead leg or lead hand, he counters his opponent amidst their attack. Dan and Osanto, teaching Burton Richardson, who taught Matt Thornton, who taught John Kavanaugh. I'm certain Connor learned this same Tao. The most perfect planning and the most delicate execution. The art of the champion. I have covered this, but it's also important to note his stance. He leads with his right hand and right leg, taking the stance from fencing philosophy. It almost looks like Bruce is holding an EP or fencing sword in the way he holds his right hand out. If you also notice, Bruce's stance is very balanced. Not all the weight on his lead nor all the weight on the back leg, allowing him to move in and out very efficiently. Yuana Yin Jacek has the same philosophy in her stance as well. Very balanced mass distribution, allowing her that efficient, light, and almost elusive ability to move in and out. And of course, Connor does this too. Right here, we see an eye gouge before Bruce's opponent could finish his move. That's another thing we should notice about Bruce's stance. His hand is always open, and of course, he does close it to deliver a punch here and there. But Bruce's style is meant to target vulnerables as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And so, losing that wind-up used to mitigate the cushioning effect from the gloves doesn't really hurt him for the practical purposes he's training for. He can, but doesn't need to KO you. He has many tools to break you in an instant. I could see this style having a little more trouble in the mixed martial arts arena because, in that game of inches, of course Bruce is incredibly fast, but the gloves incorporating the cushioning effect and the rules themselves would reduce his ability to immobilize his opponent. His training was different, the same way a boxer's training is different from a mixed martial artist. And so when you see him doing two finger push-ups, he's not doing that just for show. He's doing it because it allows him to more efficiently rip your throat from your neck, eliminate your eyes, exploit vulnerable areas of your body. And if he misses, and say hits your skull, minimizes injury. But considering the speed, precision, and his towel striking as you come in, he probably will not miss. So that leads to another question. What if Bruce did compete in MMA? He did study a myriad of disciplines, taking philosophy from all of them, including Jiu-Jitsu, always trying to improve his methodology and understanding of martial arts and to that end. He probably would be able to adjust his style to be effective in MMA, and considering his speed and inhuman work ethic, I wouldn't doubt how far this legend would go. Dare I say, could even become a champion. Bruce was free. His body was nimble. I have no doubt he would have been world champion. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. It's Kukarma, and until next time, peace.